During the summer of 2021, Clallam County PUD relocated a portion of its transmission line located on Macaw tribal lands at the northwest tip of Washington State near Nia Bay. The existing line was located near the shore running along the coastline. The access road to this line had washed out in several places making access to the line by PUD crews impossible. With the cooperation and agreement from the Macaw Tribe, the line was relocated to the south side of Highway 112. One key aspect of the project was relocating this H structure at the coastline. Supporting conductors spanning 850 feet over the Sail River Bay, the structure was relocated to the top of the hill near Highway 112. Utilizing LiDAR data to obtain the ground profile, the new line was designed and modeled in 3D space. Using the material properties of the conductors and poles, a very accurate model of the line is created. Utilizing these material properties, the program is then able to determine if the structures are strong enough to do the job. Engineering construction drawings detailing every aspect of the project are then created. Requiring a clear right-of-way for the new transmission line, a logging boundary is identified. All of the trees are then cleared from this area, making way for the new transmission line. The first pole for the new H structure is set into the ground, and the second laid nearby ready for construction. The rule of thumb for pole setting depths is 10% of the pole height plus 2 feet, which means a 70 foot tall pole requires a 9 foot hole in the ground to set it into. Proper depth is then verified. The second pole for this H structure is then lifted into the air. The life of alignment is hard work. The pole is then carefully maneuvered into position over the hole and then slowly lowered into the ground. The correct distance between pole centers is then measured and verified. Siding against a plumb bob, the pole is verified to be straight and true in the air. The hole is then backfilled and the dirt tamped down to securely anchor the pole in place. Cross arms are then lifted high into the air. The cross arm is carefully maneuvered into position and then securely bolted to the new pole. Next, 69 kV insulators are attached to the cross arms. Guy wires and anchoring equipment are laid out on the ground and guy wires are then measured for length. The next challenge is getting a pull string across the 850 foot wide Sail River Canyon, which is the start to pulling new wires to the new H structure. To accomplish this, a special gun is employed. Firing 44 caliber blanks, the gun shoots a brass dart, approximately 12 inches long, which has an orange colored pull string attached to it. The shooter gets into position, and the dart is fired across the canyon, paying out pull string behind it. The dart embeds itself in the dirt on the other side of the canyon. Slack is pulled out of the pull string. On the other side of the canyon, a higher strength line called a mule tape is tied to the pull string. The pull string then pulls the mule tape across the canyon. The mule tape is slowly brought across. The mule tape dances in the air as tension on the line changes as it is brought up on the other side by a winch. A higher strength rope called a spider line is attached to the mule tape. It is then brought across the canyon. The spider line is attached to an even stronger rope called a bull line. The bull line is attached to the new conductor and the new conductor is then brought across the canyon. A spider line is also attached to the new conductor and brought across the canyon with the new conductor. 
The spider line is then tied off to the bowl line, pulling the bowl line back across the canyon for the next conductor pull. Together the new conductor and the attached spider line are pulled across the canyon. Tied off to the bull line, the new conductor arrives on the other side of the canyon. And the process is repeated, bringing a total of three new transmission conductors and two new distribution conductors across the canyon. All five new conductors are secured to this temporary pole, waiting until the rest of the new line is built, at which time they will then be transferred to this existing H structure during an outage. To be able to install the new poles and maintain them well into the future, access roads to the new pole locations must be created. From design to construction, a road is bulldozed into the earth and then covered with crushed rock to create a drivable surface for heavy line trucks. Over 1,400 ton of rock was brought in to do the job. Hauled and dumped one truck at a time, the rock is spread out and a new road surface is created. From dirt to drivable, time for the new poles. Locations for the new poles are determined in the computer based on many different criteria, the most significant being the surrounding terrain. These locations are then precisely located on the earth by the PUD's professional land surveyor. Called staking, he drives a wooden stake in the ground to mark the center of the new pole location. The poles are then framed, which means to add all of the equipment needed on that pole at locations determined by construction specifications. And one by one, a total of eight new poles are placed into the ground, standing ready for new conductor. Ropes are run through pulleys attached to the new poles, from one end of the new line to the other. These ropes are then used to pull the new conductor back through the line of new poles. Pulling one at a time, a total of five new conductors are brought through the line, arriving at their final destination. With all of the new poles installed in the ground and new conductors strung through them, the line now stands ready to be energized with 69,000 volts of electrical energy. Tied off to a temporary pole, the new conductor must now be transferred over to the existing structure. Before the new conductor may be transferred, the old conductor must first be cut loose from the structure and dropped to the ground. To transfer the new conductor, linemen first attach a pulley to the pole. A stronger pulling rope is then brought up from the ground below. This pulling rope is then threaded through the pulley. Crews then move the boom over and attach the pulling rope to the new conductor. The new conductor is then released from its temporary attachment. Tied off securely to a truck below, the truck then pulls the rope, which is attached to the conductor, swinging the conductor over to the structure for attachment. The conductor flies through the air, moving over to its new home, and then is brought up to its final tension. One by one, each conductor is dropped to the ground. And one by one, each of the new conductors is slowly swung over to the existing structure for its final attachment. The new conductors dance in the air above Sail River as they are brought up to their final tension.
the old conductor, now laying on the ground, will be coiled up and recycled. After two years of planning, design, engineering and construction, the new line is now ready to be energized, bringing clean and reliable electrical power to the residents of Nia Bay for many years into the future.